Hello and welcome to another Aggies Beers, Wines and Spirits video. Today, so I've already been out in the garden and I've chopped a load of rhubarb. Oh, oh. We're going to be making rhubarb wine. Just rhubarb, sugar, yeast and obviously water. So I'm going to chuck the rhubarb into the pan. And I've seen um, recipes on the internet and this worked for me with the rhubarb and ginger wine. So I think it'll work great with this as well. It is an experiment, so you know, watch, see how it goes, see what you think. There, so all in the pan. Now I'm going to fill it with water. So there we are. See we're watering? Yep. That's going straight on, and that will now bubble away while we get on with the rest of the, uh, the job. So, got my fermentation bucket here. Da -da. All sterilised, cleaned, rinsed, you know, sterilised is God in this one, when it comes to brewing your own wine or beer. Four kilos of sugar, I'm not doing a five kilo or a six kilo mix this time, four kilos. Uh, make a, a nice about 10 or 12 percent wine. So, I'm only going to do two boils of the kettle because obviously I've got a load of extra hot water there. That's the four kilos in. Boiled hot kettle already, so that's going in. Obviously you've got to dissolve that, off, that sugar. And like you would with tea, you know, when you have a cup of tea or coffee, you keep stirring it until the sugar dissolves. Always dissolves better with hot water, red hot water, I find. So I've got the rhubarb from the garden. Um, so it's not cost me anything. The sugar was £1.25 a bag, so £2.50. Sachet yeast, £3.50. £3.50 with free fruit. Uh, you probably cost you two or three quid to get the rhubarb I've used. So bear that fact in mind if you're going to do this. And now, like the wife says, I'm good at stirring, well, it used to be. Not so much at the moment. Keep stirring it until you know it's gone. What I may have to do is uh, when the second kettle goes in, that that'll help out a bit, and that should cool, that should get rid of the rest. I wasn't going to do a beer kit, and then I thought to myself, well, a wine kit rather. I've got a beer kit to do in a minute, but that's something special as well. So that's bubbling away, uh, albeit a bit slow. I'm going to bubble it until it gets, Jesus Christ, it's warm. Bubble it until it gets a bit mushy. So while I'm here talking, I got my rhubarb from the garden all cleaned and, and I might as well get ready for the next um, brew. So I'm doing a, a rhubarb stout. So I've got a stout mix from Wilco's. I'm using two kilos of sugar for added um, alcohol content. And uh, it should produce very tasty rhubarb wine. That's, that's the hope anyway. Rhubarb beer rather. This is rhubarb wine. So again, I've got multiple stalks here. Use, quite, use as much as you can. Obviously, it's, if it's all about keeping the cost down, then I think a couple of packs, two, three, three quid's worth should be ample. And if you've got somebody who can get it for free, well, that's the job, eh? Pays to grow your own sometimes. 
I suppose really I could make a rhubarb crumble one day because I love rhubarb. Man, that's not that sharp. It kills someone with this, but you can hardly cut with it, Bob. And it's red hot in here, got that boiling. The oven's on, kettle's boiling. So I've got different varieties of rhubarb as well. Um, I've got four different varieties in the garden. And I suppose they would all add a little bit of difference to the flavour, a different twang. Right, well, looks like that kettle's nearly boiled. Um, the mash is going along nicely. I'm going to leave it until they get a bit spun, uh, until they get a bit soft, because I want the flavour to release into the beer, as it were. And with all this sugar, the rhubarb will feed off the sugar as well. The sugar will go into the rhubarb, and it should make for a fantastic rhubarb wine in the end, at least. So, here we go. Not putting the old kettle in, so what I would say is a kettle and a half, four kilos of sugar. Because obviously when I pour the pan in with the water in, it's going to up the temperature more. So you may have to bring it, you know, bring it down a bit. The key thing is that we dissolve the sugar. Which already, no resistance. So that's great. Right. Start filling with cold water, up to about 20 litres I think. See how we go. I'm lucky because I live in a good area. But some people might have to filter their water. Oh, got that sweat on. Ten liters now. The rhubarb boil is going nicely. Definitely want to get it so it's mushy. Seventeen there. That's boiling away. We love that. Getting that rhubarb all mushy, releasing them flavours. One more, and we'll see how it cooks. Now, let's be fair. If you wanted to be a purist, you would be checking your temperatures and stuff before you put the yeast on. That's actually nice, it's not hot, it's beyond between lukewarm and cool, somewhere between there. So, as you can see, that's bubbling away quite nicely. I'm gonna give it a stir, see how we go. Right, oh, there we go, steamed up there. It's hot stuff. So yeah, not quite ready yet. Oh, releasing that mushiness, um, that rhubarb flavour, lovely. I've got two of these, so I've got to do this and then the, then the beer uh, one as well. So to me, that's lovely. Right, so turn it off. There we go. 
that's not turned it in enough. I'll get a bollock in. Right. As you do. Put that there. It's a bloody balance in that because you don't want to get any. Give it a stir again. So now we've got all the rhubarb at the top, stirring away, getting that flavour through the whole of it. Not a massive amount of rhubarb actually, I probably could put more in. And uh, there you go, it's in. I'm just going to give it another stir, try and get the temperature right. Thanks to my son for leaving the door open. That was the dog, who clippy cloppy feet. It's on the piss. I'll be on the piss later. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, it's lovely. Put my finger in, it's lukewarm, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect temperature. Now we're going to bash the yeast on. With 23 litres, 23 litres. I could have gone to 25 if I really wanted to, but 23 litres is fine. Uh, yeast on the top. And uh, I don't even need to stir it because by the time we get to the shed, it's already going to be bloody bubbling away like a swine. So. And that's it, 12 minutes, not bad. Obviously, it's going to make a slightly off white. Well, it depends on how much red, if you use more red rhubarb, it goes more pinkish tinge, so to remember. You could put raisins in there. I mean, I've got raisins over there. I could actually put some raisins in to add a bit of body. Let's do it. Sultanas. So we'll put the sultanas in. Uh, you can put raisins in. You know, there's all sorts you can put in. Especially if you've got it lying around. Yeah. They'll release a bit of something in it. Right? It all brings body. And at the end of the day, it's cost me two fifty, three fifty, and. £3.50 and free for and about 20 minutes of my time in total. What's not to love about that? Right, well, this is obviously day one. We'll come back to it in a, in a while. I'll give you a bit of an update maybe and see how it goes. But the main update will be on the, the day when I uh, when it's drained out. And that's it for this uh, quick beer, quick wine making video. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Cheers.